Hi there, this is Pete with BoardGameBoost.com. Thanks for joining me. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the Stackade product available at BoardGameBoost.com. The Stackade is a universal card management accessory, although it could also be used for anything that stacks, such as tiles or hexes. The Stackade can be used interchangeably as either an organizer or storage, lying on its back like this, or as a card tower for drawing cards or stacks of anything during gameplay. Before going on, I should note that in this demonstration, I'll be using black divider walls. However, the stackade is available for initial purchase in your choice of either black or white divider walls. And additional walls in a variety of colors are also available for purchase for a small additional cost. The stackade at its core is this rectangular box in which divider walls can be inserted in a multitude of different locations and snapped securely into place, like so. The key feature of the stackade is that these divider walls can be snapped into place in one of three different angles, as shown here. Here's perpendicular, a slight angle, and a more significant angle. It is this feature that allows the stackade to be configured for a variety of different uses. Let's take a quick closer look. On the back wall of the rectangular box, there are these connector slots here. And correspondingly in line with each one are these uh, divots here in the side walls. If we look at a divider wall, you'll see there's this fin on the back and that's what snaps into the back wall. And there are these two pins here on the side which match up and fit into these uh, slots here on the side walls. So let's go ahead and put a divider wall in. Let's just do it at a perpendicular angle here, okay? So I'm gonna just line up the pins and the side wall here to the corresponding, uh, the matching slot in the back wall. And then I'm just gonna put some pressure in and you can hear it, it snapped in and it's firmly in there. And you can see now that we have a perpendicular wall there, okay? Uh, by the way, anytime you want to get a divider wall out easily, no matter which configuration it's in, you can just put a little pressure here on this fin in the back and it'll just pop right out. So now if we want to put this divider wall in in either of the two angles, whether it's a slight angle or a significant angle, it's going to be largely the same process. It's just that this time, instead of putting the uh, pins here in the side slot and then the exact matching back wall slot, we're going to just offset by one to give it that slight angle. So here we go. We're gonna line up these pins here on the side, but then we're gonna offset by one connector slot in the back, and we're gonna put some pressure down, and it'll snap in, you heard it. And now you can see we have this gradual angle, the slight angle here, because it's offset by just one. And again, it's firmly snapped in there. So let's pop this out. And now let's go ahead and do the significant angle. Again, it's the same process, only this time we're gonna offset the front slot and the back wall slot by two. Okay, so here we go. I have my front pins in, then I'm gonna go one and then two. Okay, and then I'm gonna put some pressure down and you heard it snap. Again, it's firmly in and you can see that now we have a pretty dramatic angle here. It's offset by two. Okay, so now let me take you through some examples of different ways you can use these angles and these wall positions. To use the stackade as an organizer, you're gonna to wanna to have it on its back wall, like this, lying down. And then the divider walls will be inserted vertically or perpendicular, like so. And then you'll use the walls as much as you need to divide the cards that go in vertically like this. Here's an example of the stackade in use in organizer form. For this example, I'm using cards from the game Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. As you can see, the vertical divider walls are used to sort the cards in whatever manner you see fit. I also want to point out that the divider walls have these divots in them, and the end walls have these curvatures, so that when it's time to pull a deck out, you're able to get your fingers around the cards to pull them out easily. The dimensions of the stackade were carefully designed so that it would conveniently fit in the large majority of game boxes while still retaining a beneficial level of functionality. Now let's take a look at the Stackade's other function, which is as a card tower. For this, you wanna have it standing straight up like this. 
and the divider walls will be inserted for this function either at a slight angle, which is offset by one, or at a steep angle, which is offset by two. We're gonna do the slight angle example first, and you're gonna use this um, for games that have decks of cards that you uh, don't need to draw from all that much, but maybe you need to pull the deck out and do something with from time to time. And also, this would be for games that have a lot of different decks of cards, like, again, uh, for example, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition, um, because then you're really going to want to have uh, space to put a lot of cards on this tower, um, a lot of different decks. So let me go ahead and set up that example for you. Uh, so here's a good example of a, a card tower setup, and again, here I'm using the cards from Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. Now you'll see from the side angle here that I actually have the divider walls in at two different angles. These three walls at the top I have in at the slight angle, offset by one, and these bottom walls I have inserted at the steeper angle, offset by two. So I'll explain that in a second, but let's start at the top, and you'll see here that up, up here I have these cards uh, these are actually the smaller cards, and so they can go side by side um, in here. And I also have some tokens here, because while the stackade is primarily for cards, it's certainly not limited to cards. So if you're not familiar with the game um, in Arkham Horror, uh, these smaller decks, um, sometimes you'll need to draw a card off the top, but often uh, you'll need to pull the entire deck out to go hunting for a specific card. So... These uh, divots here in the divider wall allow you to easily get your thumb under the deck and pull the entire thing out. Okay, um, so those are stored up here. And again, because you're not drawing off the top a lot, you can have the wall at the slighter angle. I went for the steeper angle here on the bottom because these cards you're going to be more frequently drawing off the top. And that steeper angle uh, makes it easier to pull off the top and not worry about um, extra cards coming off with it. One other thing to note about these divots in the divider wall is if you're ever playing a game that you need to draw off the bottom of a deck, you can easily get your finger underneath the card on the bottom and just pull off the bottom like this. In my next example, I'm going to show you a setup for a game that has a, a, a huge deck that needs to be drawn from frequently. So I'm just going to show you how you would set up for that. For my next example, I'll be using a very popular game a lot of people are familiar with. Terraforming Mars. So in this game, there are there's a huge deck of cards that everyone will be drawing from frequently throughout the game. Um, and frankly, uh, there are tons of expansions for it now, and all of them, most of them add even more cards. So in this configuration, you can see that I have just one divider wall in there uh, at the steepest angle, which is a offset by two. And it's all the way at the bottom, and then I have all of the cards piled on top of it. Now, just to be clear, um, this example here is using uh, the base game cards as well as an expansion or two. It is not all the expansions, and I will say up front that the Stackade unit, one unit by itself, cannot handle all of the cards from all of the expansions in Terraforming Mars. But with that said, um, I have it set up this way because, um, again, people are going to be drawing cards off the top of this frequently. Um, so it's going to need to be set up to, to be very easy to do that. Now, just to point out here, these cards I'm showing here are sleeved, so the stackade does accommodate sleeved cards of this size. But one thing I want to touch on is that once you have this much weight in the stackade, and again, it's going to be passed around a lot, uh, it does introduce a little bit of instability to it. So there is another feature to the stackade to address this uh, with the divider walls, and I'll demonstrate that for you now. All right, so I've taken the cards out for a moment, and I've also put a hard surface down just to demonstrate this next part. But So if you want to add a little stabili stability to um, the tower, now again, when you're using it generally, you won't need this, but if you're playing a game where there's going to be just a ton of card drawing, you may want to consider this. You'll see the divider walls have these uh, four slots in them. This can be done either with the walls facing in or out. It doesn't matter. But if you line these up, you'll see that on the bottom of the tower, it doesn't matter which side you declare the bottom or top, um, there are these uh, pins sticking out here, and they'll snap into these tower, into these uh, divider walls. So you can see I've lined this up, and I'm just putting some pressure on it like this. Okay. 
and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And uh, they do fit very nicely together like this, but again, you could you could do them the opposite way and have them sitting out like this if you wanted to, although it just adds a lot of space to this, the tower uh, on the table. But in this way, you've added this extra foot to the, uh, to the stackade, and that will really help add to the stability from a vertical perspective. So the last thing I'm going to demonstrate um, is a little bit of a more advanced uh, setup, and this assumes you have two of these stackade units. So let's just say you want to play a game uh, that has just a ton of cards in a deck, again, like Terraforming Mars with all the expansions. Um, so it, again, won't, all the cards won't fit in one stackade unit. So if you have two stackade units, of course, you could just have them side by side with different cards and uh, go that way. Uh, additionally, though, if you wanted to, these do stack. So if you wanted to, you could take um, a second unit and stack it. Now you see in this case, these pins aren't lining up. So in that case, I just flip it right over to the other side and now they line up. So if you wanted to flat out stack two stackade units, you just line the pins up and then put some pressure together like this, okay? And now they are stacked and they're actually locked quite firmly. So if you did this with Terraforming Mars, you would have as much cards as could fit here, and then you have these dividers in the way. You'd have to have uh, another ramp here and then the more cards on top. But I realize that wouldn't make a lot of people happy, so there is a way to connect them seamlessly. Now, anytime you want to disconnect two stack towers, you want to turn it upside down so that the back wall is facing up like this, and then just put some pressure like this to snap them apart. Okay, now let's go ahead and connect these seamlessly. So to do that, we want to take this end wall out. This has been designed to just snap out by putting some pressure out like this. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Again, I'm just going to pull out. Okay, and now once again, I'm going to line up the pins and put some gentle but firm pressure together. You can also grab them here and push together. Okay, they'll snap very firmly together. And once you've got this, now you've got a large tower. And of course, in this configuration, you'd want to use divider walls, uh, again, to, to build a, a more solid base for it. Um, these are actually connected very firmly, but if you want to be extra sure they're not going to come apart on you, then you take those two side walls that you, dis that you disconnected, um, and you just line these pins up right here. See these two pins? There are holes in the sidewalls, so you can just line them up and uh, pinch together, and they'll snap into place. And you can hear it snapping in, okay? So you see, like that, they're gonna really hold these walls together to ensure no disaster occurs. Now, they will stick out a little bit, but again, uh, you're, you won't have any fear of these falling off. And now you'll have a card tower with all the cards in it, and you have a probably more than enough room for any game in existence. That concludes the product demonstration portion of this video. I'll now take you through the very easy initial assembly that's needed if you purchase this product and first receive it in the mail. When you first open your package, you'll have a stack of pieces like this. It consists of two side walls, six divider walls, one back wall, and a bracket here with two end walls. All of the pieces ship with a protective bracket around it, so the first step is to punch all the pieces out of their brackets. One thing to note as you're punching the pieces out of the brackets is to be careful of these uh, B-shaped tabs that are on every piece. Those have a special function for removing the paper, which I'll explain shortly, but they break off very easily. So you just wanna to try to be careful as you're breaking the piece, the bracket out around it. If these do break off, it's really no big deal. They don't serve any functional purpose for the product. Again, they're just there to help with paper removal, but if you can, just try to keep them intact as you're breaking them out of the brackets. 
Once you're done, you'll have the pieces like this outside of their brackets. Again, you have the two side walls, the back wall, the divider walls, and the two end walls. The next step before removing the paper is to punch out all of these inserts that come in the walls, okay? So pretty much every wall here, except for these two end walls, has something to punch out. Um, so the best way to do this, in my opinion, is to take any piece, but I'm using this divider wall, for example, and just use a rounded edge and put it down like this and just put some pressure on the slot. And you see, it'll just break out like this, okay? So I'm just gonna go do that. Um, all of them have a break in the middle with the exception of just this one longer piece uh, in the side walls, but it still works out the same way. You just punch it out, okay? So you'll want to do that again with these big connector slots in the back wall, same way. And you'll even want to do it in the slots in the divider walls, okay? One thing I do just want to warn you about is while you're doing this, uh, this does create, you know, these small pieces. So if you have small children around or any pets, do just be careful as you do this process to keep them away from this, just so there's no choking hazard. Once you're done, all of your pieces should look like this. We're almost ready for assembly, but first we do need to take the protective paper off both sides of every piece. This is where these B tabs come into play. Almost every product from BoardGameBoost.com will have tabs somewhere on it that look like letter Bs. The B stands for break off, and you'll see one of the two Bs has a line under it. In this case, it's on the right side. So you just wanna take your finger and push away from that line, away from you, and you'll see that this piece snaps off. And what that does is it takes the paper on the other side with it so that you can just pull up and get the paper started. And once you do, it pretty much stays together very nicely, so it's really easy to take off. Again, I'll just show you on the other side here quickly. I'll just pull up and the paper comes right with that B tab. Uh, this prevents you from having to pick for the edge of the paper with a fingernail. So go ahead and remove all of the protective paper from all of the pieces in your set. Now that all the paper's off, these are the pieces you should be looking at. For the initial assembly, we're only gonna be working with the clear pieces, so you can take your divider walls and set them aside. You'll also want to make sure you're working on a hard surface of some kind, whether it's a table or a floor. I'm going to be using this mat right here. And here we go. Initial assembly is extremely easy. We're going to start by taking a side wall. Doesn't matter which one, doesn't matter which way it's facing. Okay, we're just going to take a side wall. And then we're going to take our back wall. And we're going to look at these tab, these uh, slots, I should say, and these tabs. And we're just going to line them up. Once you do, you're gonna to wanna to put some vertical pressure straight down, straight down. I like to grip the sides and push down and maybe push down a little bit here, but whatever you do, make sure that all your pressure is straight down and not lateral at all, because if this flops one way or the other, you risk breaking some of these pieces of plastic, okay? Once you've done that, you just wanna look down here at the side and make sure it's all the way snapped together. In this case, it is. And now I'm gonna take my other side wall and I'm gonna take this assembly I've made and we just wanna finish the, uh, the U shape here of the box. So if I lined it up like this, obviously it won't connect this way. And if I lined it up like this, I'll end up with an S. So I don't want that. So I'm just gonna flip this around and now it lines up nicely. And once again, I'm gonna put vertical force down. I'm pinching together and pushing down with that. Um, you can push down on the very top of this back wall piece but just make sure you're not putting any pressure on this wall because again, it doesn't have anything to stabilize it yet. Uh, so you would risk breaking it. But once you've got this together, you wanna just check to make sure it's all the way there and you see there's some gap there. So I'm gonna come back and push down a little more and now it's all the way there. And you can see I have this nice U shape to the box. The last step is to add these end walls, okay? So what's gonna happen here is there are two tabs here that fit into these recesses here. And there are two tabs on the side that fit into these deep recesses on the side walls, okay? So I'm just gonna line those up and put some downward pressure. Okay, you'll hear it snap together. Once you've got it in a little bit, I'm gonna also pinch together to make sure that everything's nice and tight. 
And I'm going to look at the side, too, to make sure that these pins are all the way down. Uh, there's a little gap there, so I'm going to put some more pressure here, and you hear it snap a little bit more. Okay, so we're nice and tight. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, one of the two end wall pieces does have the Stackade logo etched into it. So just for aesthetics, you'll want to make sure it's not showing up backwards here. So just uh, turn it the right way as needed. Do the exact same thing. Snap down, snap together here, okay, and check it to make sure it's fully secure, and it is. And there you have it, your core uh, piece of the stackade is done and ready to have those uh, divider walls snapped into it as needed. And that concludes this video. I want to thank you for joining me today and checking out this product. I hope you like it. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to drop me a line. I'm always happy to help in any way that I can. So with that, thanks again. And remember, if you're playing, you're already winning. See you next time.